Hello guys, welcome to Banyan Botanicals YouTube channel where we share tips for healthy living and wellness and interview experts of Ayurveda. And today we have a special guest, Melanie Sachs. Melanie, would you take a minute to introduce yourself and tell us about your work? Um, sure. I would say, um, first of all, thank you very, very much. This is such a fascinating opportunity. And um, I would like to say that I was one of the very first students of Dr. Ladd and in the same class with uh, Scott, the owner of Banyan Botanical. So it's even more of a thrill to be here. Um, my present work, actually, and the work that I've been doing in Ayurveda over the last 25 years has been with the spa and beauty industry. I would say we teach Ayurvedic spa techniques and provide the products that people need in order to do those techniques, both from the Indian um, Ayurveda and also from Tibetan Ayurveda. So a, a, little bit, a little bit different spin in terms of the Tibetan element, but um, yeah, I've been involved with Ayurveda for quite a long time and um, seen many, many changes. and. Um, initially got involved with Ayurveda from the point of view of interest in diet. So that's what I'm interested to talk to today because I feel like it's, um, I don't want it to be the, the weakest link in what we do in Ayurveda. Ayurveda says, you know, all, all disorders start with indigestion. And I think there's so much confusion in America about what to eat, how to eat, or just not paying any attention to what we eat that I feel like really if we don't pay attention to this part, then all of the spa therapies, all of the herbal medicines, all of the panchakarmas, all of the counseling, it just doesn't stand on a solid foundation. So um, I hope we get to do more of these interviews, but I just wanted to start there uh, as that's what really introduced me to um, Ayurveda and it was the, the first part of Ayurveda that I that I could get my head around. And I'm still working with it. So, you know, I feel like Ayurvedic food in America, it's a work in progress. That's so fascinating. We're so honored to have you uh, with so much experience. And I'm really looking forward to hearing all your secrets about Ayurveda and nutrition. Um, so you mentioned a very interesting concept that all medicine, all herbs, all panchakarma are um, irrelevant if the person is not eating a diet that serves their body best. But when somebody starts um, to implement Ayurveda into their lifestyle, they get this concept that it means that they need to start eating, eating Indian food all the time. Um, how can a Westerner adopt Ayurveda without turning to Indian cuisine necessarily? Well, you know, I would say this is an interesting one, and I think I read your question a little bit differently, and I agree that a lot of people, if you say Ayurveda and you say food, the next thing out of their mouth is, you know, if they know anything, it's like, oh, rice and dal, you know, mm -hmm. or, oh, delicious, rice and dal, yeah? And I would say, um, when we say Indian food, first of all, I would really strongly recommend that people differentiate in their mind the difference between Indian food and Ayurvedic cuisine. Mm -hmm. okay. One is a healing diet. Indian food in general um, or Indian food can be as bad as, uh, as what we call in America the sad diet, uh, standard American diet. So if you would say American food, a lot of people would say, oh, that's fast food McDonald's. If you say Indian food, you know, a lot of Indian food has exactly the same problems as McDonald's. It's too fatty, it's too salty, it's too sugary, it's stale, you know. Um, so when we talk about adopting Indian food into, um, a, a, as, as part of our Ayurvedic approach, I would like to be clear that we're talking about Ayurvedic Indian food, okay. which is fresh and, and regional. We have to remember that India is, a, is an entire continent going from high Himalayas in the north all the way down to the tropics. So there's no way that you would want to eat the same way in uh, Nova Scotia, for example, as you would in Florida or the Caribbean. So there's a massive difference north to, north to south and, and probably more east to west than I don't even know about. So when it comes to thinking about Indian diet, 
or adopting Indian diet, I think what we want to think about is what is the what is the what is the story here? What are we trying to bring into play? Can we use Indian food as a template for what we should do, or Ayurvedic diet as a template for what we should be looking at to do in our own region in the United States? Um, I can tell you a, an interesting example. Um, in my own country, the United Kingdom, one of the biggest problems that the Indian population had when they first came to the UK was there was an epidemic of rickets. Now, rickets is a disorder where uh, people aren't getting enough calcium, especially children, and you actually get bow-legged children because the bones aren't strong enough. Well, this is a great example of how one cuisine from a particular part of the world doesn't always translate to another part of the world. In India, people were getting vitamin D from sunshine. In the north of England, people didn't get enough sunshine and the Indian population was wearing more clothing because they were colder than the rest of the, the English population. You know, So sometimes things just don't translate well climactically and sometimes um, the diet that is, you know, the, the common diet in India isn't particularly optimal in uh, either. But if we think about... Um, if we think about what is optimal about an Ayurvedic diet, you would say, I think things like eating locally, eating seasonally, eating organic, eating at home, eating fresh, um, eating what suits you, all of those things. Those are basic Ayurveda that, that, that translates perfectly, absolutely perfectly, as well as a diet that's rich in whole grains and fruits, vegetables, all the kinds of things that we're told um, to do anyway, it, or, the, or let's say the best advice in this country. Yeah, Yeah. so what I'm hearing you is that not that we're necessarily taking Indian food and starting to eat it at home, we're just taking principles of Ayurveda and applying them to the products um, that we have locally in our region. Yeah, and you know, I, I think another big difficulty is um, we don't have a notion in this country of what is regional cuisine anymore. Huh? I, there's a there's a wonderful movement called the slow food movement that started in France, right? For example, and um, you know, in France you have microclimates and very regional food, and people are proud of their regional specialities. We have that a little bit in this country, but it, it's mostly been lost. And I, even in my own location here on the West Coast, if I go and ask the indigenous people about the kinds of foods that they traditionally ate, mm -hmm. they'll yeah. say, well, you know, the environment has been changed. You know, we don't have the oak forests like we used to. The ocean has been changed. And we're choosing just not to tell you about our herbal medicine or how we would cook because... We've told you guys things before, and you've trashed the ideas, and we don't want to talk to you anymore about our secrets. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge dilemma in some ways, that how do we actually rediscover what is, uh, what is a sound regional diet in the United States? That's why I'm saying it's a work in progress. It totally is a work it's, in progress. It's, it's so interesting that you mentioned then. So for somebody who's never done it in their life, and for somebody that the concept is very new, what, where would they start? Like, what would they think about trying to figure out what is best to put on their plate? Um, you know, I always start with a couple of questions. The first question is, um, do you know how to cook? Do you have any interest in cooking? Do you have any time to cook, right? If there's, a, if there's a yes to any one of those three, then we have a place to start about food preparation. If, if there's a no almost to any one of those three, then we're going to be talking about what are they going to be finding at the deli? Huh? Which restaurant should they go to? So um, given, that they're, given that somebody is interested in cooking, I would say the first thing that you want to tell them is to take out the kinds of things like refined carbohydrates, refined sugar and additives. 
get rid of get rid of junk get rid of, of synthetics and get rid of junk that's the best place to start and then look at foods that might bother them if you think of 70% of the american population being um, dairy intolerant yeah. that's a huge one you know this, the the milk that ca- that is in the average american supermarket is not the milk that ayurveda is talking about the meat that's in our regular supermarket is not the meat that they're talking about even the vegetables and you know i have to say you know gmo foods it's changing everything and it's fascinating for me to hear people say you know i can eat bread in europe but i can't eat bread in america so true for myself i go to russia i can eat bread i do not eat any kind of bread in the us yep exactly so you know that's that's very very broad strokes i totally get it you know and then i would say beyond that think about a diet that is principally grains beans vegetables fruits some fermented food a little bit of dairy food uh, and that, and make that your basis you know some people need a little meat still some people don't but um you know it's that's why i'm saying it's a work in progress and i don't feel like in a lot of ways there's anything that is um I mean there's I would say there's a very loose framework and I think that's why there's such a confusion to be honest that people are you know wouldn't it be great if we were like uh, macrobiotics and you say 50% brown rice and 25% dadoki beans and the rest vegetables and that's great for everyone everywhere and ayurveda would say well kind of sort of but you know there's all kinds of variations in that too um i also think that it's really great for people to look at what is their traditional cuisine and to look at traditional cuisines in general because in my experience traditional cuisines um actually embrace so many of the principles of ayurveda and make use of herbs and spices so um i can't say as an english person really a lot of spice it just wasn't in our cuisine but you know there are a few herbs here and there and people also laugh when you talk about english food because it's pretty plain i have to admit. but you know <clears throat> i really like the concept that you mentioned first get rid of junk getting rid of junk is already f- a huge step and it's such a different concept when people start thinking well i need to add super foods and i need to add this and that um without first thinking what's actually hurting in my present diet and then mm-hmm. taking it out first and then working with whatever is left which mm-hmm. will be mostly healthy stuff and you know it's it's very interesting if you start to say take out the junk and eat less meat there's a lot of people that will say oh my gosh i'm going to starve yeah and so the next thing you have to say is you know i assure you you won't you know most of the world lives on what i'm asking you to consume but it might be tremendously unfamiliar to you in the beginning yeah in the beginning you know uh, but the variety that's there is you know i would say 100 times what is uh, you know what is uh, beyond burgers and fries yeah. honest yeah so i'm just keeping an open mind and trying things and then figuring out what works what doesn't so it sounds like what you're describing and what your life has been it's always an experiment always an experiment trying seeing if it works and being open minded uh, it took me 7 years of living in albuquerque to say wow i get this eating chili right <laughs> and it took me at least 2 or 3 years in california to say wow no i know why californians think they can live on smoothies and salad you know i can buy salad here that somebody pulled out of the ground at 6 in the morning and i'm buying that lettuce at 8 in the morning yeah that's very different from you know some poor sad thing in the back of a health food store in manhattan you know that's tremendous vital energy right there with you know loads of sunshine and a lot of heat in the climate and a very active lifestyle yeah. so you know you it is it's a big experiment and you know mostly people would think of going to a particular region 
and asking the people that have lived there a while, what do they eat? And one of the weird things here is people will say, we eat anything all the time, any, you know, doesn't matter the season, doesn't matter the weather, doesn't matter our body type, doesn't matter how well we digest. We just grab something and go. You know, and I think that the, the attitude of actually taking time to select and taking time to cook and taking time to eat, that's a huge piece that Ayurveda has to offer. Yeah, so it's Claudia Welsh would say it's radical self care in this world. Radical self care. Yeah. It is radical. Yeah. Uh, so you started mentioning a little bit about spices, and Ayurveda is huge on spices. So, um, mm-hmm. A lot of the Americans are unfamiliar with using spices, like ketchup is their go-to spice. Um, mm-hmm. What are some spices that somebody can start experimenting with when they're just beginning and maybe some food just seems so plain? Um, mm-hmm. So what can they start adding? It's, it's interesting to know that spices actually don't grow in a whole half hemisphere of, of, the, of the world. The only spice that is native to our hemisphere is pepper and that's in the Caribbean yeah? so all of the flavors that we've had in the, in, in the Americas are actually herbs not spices traditionally okay but that doesn't mean to say we shouldn't borrow and consume what uh, what we can from Ayurveda because there are just tremendous benefits from um, from the spices and the spices are, are twofold. They're food preservatives, they're medicines in themselves, and they're flavorings. And the, the first thing I would like to say about spicing, and this is available anywhere, you know, this is all over the planet. The first sp- spice has to be salt. No? Okay. Because why? Spi- uh, salt increases agony. But we're not talking about running out and buying Morton's salt. That stuff is only sodium chloride. Sometimes it has heavy metals in it. Sometimes it has dextrose in it. And it is really, really irritating to your body. So if I'm looking at one basic change, Mm -hmm. I would say salt quality. Salt quality first. So So getting a... Which one would you recommend? um, any, any, Any natural salt. So... A lot of people at the present moment, they favor Himalayan salt, that mm-hmm. pink Himalayan salt. Other people really like Celtic salt. Yes. But so long as it's a salt that is um, a natural sea salt or a natural rock salt, uh, that's going to have more minerals in it and be less irritating to your digestion. And that's then, a great in, ter- one. in terms of spices, there are three. Um, turmeric cumin, coriander. Uh, They're like the the three sisters, the three basic ones, and a really great blend that is is basic and and can be put in meat dishes, can be put in bean dishes, is in uh, that combination of spices in a one, two, three ratio. So if you think of one turmeric, two cumin, three coriander. So that would be one teaspoon of turmeric, two teaspoons of cumin, three teaspoons of coriander. You can make that blend and just put a teaspoon of that in any bean dish. And I have a really interesting story about that. Coming from a macrobiotic background myself, we gave that suggestion to a family that were very strictly macrobiotic. They lived actually in uh, Belgium. Mm -hmm. And we told them, you know, one of the changes you might make is to put these three spices in your aduki beans, right, Mm -hmm. Japanese beans. And they did that. And they found that they put on weight and that they actually spoke to one another at mealtimes. So all spices have an ability, all of those three spices have a tremendous ability to help you digest your food better, to assimilate the proteins in the food better. And spices also stimulate your mental activity. So when you only eat food that is plain, you only have plain thinking. When you add more flavor to your food, it makes your, your brain dance. That's an interesting parallel. Um, Melanie, you mentioned something that I feel like might scare some of our listeners. You said that uh, having spices might make people add weight. And I feel like a lot of people mm-hmm. need to lose weight. Oh. Um, Okay, so I was talking about skinny, macrobiotic people. Okay, okay? 
these it, people were were vegan and they were down to skin and bone. Okay, so there is that situation. It comes up more rarely, but people can get emaciated. And I would say people that are looking at healthy foods, if those healthy foods don't suit them and they're not assimilating the foods well, then they will have that issue of putting on weight. It's also interesting with those spices, they are helping digestion. So whether your system is sluggish or whether your system actually needs to assimilate more, it will do both for you. So don't be afraid that, you know, that those spices are going to put on weight. They're actually going to help level your blood sugar. They're going to help elimination. They're going to help your circulation. M many, many things. Yeah, and I, I personally agree with you. I think um, in terms of a person with normal weight or somebody who is at a higher weight, what I've experienced is you actually, because you are assimilating better, you need less amount of food. Um, mm -hmm. So you fill up faster. So guys, don't be afraid to get spices. You're not going to gain weight if you don't need to. You just help your body to get into a balanced, good weight. And Banyan Botanicals has really good spices, so you can always get it on the website. And Melanie, um, is there a way for people to find you, a website, if you have any workshops? You can find us at www.diamondwayayurveda.com. That's diamond like the jewel, W-A-Y. And if you're watching this, you probably know how to spell Ayurveda, hopefully. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us today. And hopefully we'll have you back for many more. Okay, thank you.